Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News. And I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today, a very important, that we, important uh, topic or subject, you may call it, that we have picked up. Uh, and that is about the ISK threat, the Islamic State of Khurasan. We all know uh, the current state of affairs in Afghanistan. And especially, it is believed that around 80% of the target for the IS is the Taliban regime. Primarily, if you look at uh, various uh, attacks, either in the mosque or otherwise, that has claimed hundreds of precious lives, again claimed by the ISK. Now you talk about certain incidents that took place inside the Pakistani border, again claimed by the ISK. What sort of strength do they have? What sort of support are they getting? And from whom? That is a million dollar question. Now recently, uh, four very important I would say senators of the United States of America visited Pakistan, they met the PM, they met the COS. And again, a major area of discussion was about the future of Afghanistan as we are also uh, holding this very important conference of OIC and uh, most of these foreign ministers from various Muslim countries will be attending Pakistan, people from the World Bank, people from other financial institutions, even from the United Nations, European Union. They'll be in Pakistan primarily to discuss what needs to be done and how to take care of the people of Afghanistan. As far as the recognition of the Taliban regime is concerned, there are a lot of ifs and buts. But where is it heading? One important uh, article that was written by, by one of our very dear friends, our Mr. Amir Rana Saab, in which he has talked about the real threat. And he says if the turmoil is going to continue in Afghanistan, the fallout factor is going to be inside the Pakistani territory. Now, how to avoid it? how to sort of look after the affairs in Afghanistan, how to make sure that uh, there should be a proper, the kind of government which we call a broad-based government in which every segment of society or perhaps from various ethnic groups, these people should come together to form a government and move forward. Now, that seems to be uh, a task that is uh, pretty uh, difficult. But having said that, as they say, that nothing is impossible. And if the Western world really supports them, where there is a will, there is a way. This is exactly what the situation is going to be like. But uh, before I introduce you to our panelists, our production team has prepared a report. Let's watch that first. Afghanistan, a war-torn state, is facing a debilitating security situation since the Taliban has taken over the state as the threat of the Islamic State Khorasan has created havoc for the new interim government of the Taliban specifically in terms of being accepted as legitimate governmental entity in the international arena. Moreover, the surge in their terror attacks is creating grave personal and community insecurity situations for Afghan citizens, as the Islamic State Khorasan is directly targeting the already fiercely diverse population makeup of Afghanistan. Islamic State announced the formation of its Khorasan branch in 2015 and appointed Hafiz Khan as its leader. The Islamic movement of Uzbekistan pledged allegiance to the Islamic State of Khorasan. Since then, Islamic State Khorasan started recruiting Taliban defectors to join its ranks. Islamic State Khorasan and the Taliban see each other as irreconcilable enemies, aiming for achieving supremacy over each other. Islamic State Khorasan's capacity to operate regionally and transnationally and its cadre of foreign fighters from Europe, Middle East and South Asia have made the group even more threatening. Pakistan as an immediate neighbor of Afghanistan is at the highest risk that the Islamic State Khorasan could infiltrate and hurt its security and stability metrics, specifically by manipulating the diverse ethnic and sectarian population makeup. Such concerns are also echoed recently in the statements of the representatives of Russia and China. The Islamic State Khorasan announced a long war against the Taliban since the Taliban had signed the Doha deal with the United States in February 2020. Though the Taliban have also launched a deadly crackdown on Islamic State Khorasan, however, their successes regarding them remain seldom. Now to talk about this, we have with us in our studio on my right is Air Vice Marshal Retired Ijaz Malik Saab, who's a senior analyst, sir. Thank you so much for your time. You. And we also have with us Hassan Khan Saab, expert on Afghan affairs. Thank you so much, Khan Saab, for your time. And on Skype, we have with us Amir Rana Saab. He's the director of PIPS, and he's also a known security analyst. Rana Saab, pleasure to have you on the show, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Gentlemen, if you allow me, let me put the first question uh, to Amir Rana Saab. Rana Saab, I was, in fact, reading your um, article uh, in the paper and uh, we decided that we should you know pick up this particular topic uh, for discussion now since you have mentioned about the ISK threat and uh, a lot has been said a lot has been written but now so it seems that if the turmoil 
or the current situation continues in, in Afghanistan, the fallout factor, which we have already uh, started witnessing, is going to get uh, further. And perhaps it could lead uh, to something which could be an actual problem uh, for the bordering areas with Afghanistan, and in particular, in Balochistan also. Now, let's start off from there, sir, since you have done a lot of research on this and you're, uh, you've come up with certain names and the kind of... Uh, you know, mindset they have and the kind of ideology they are following. First of all, sir, the first and the foremost question, do you think Taliban with all sorts of weapon that they have in fact uh, occupied after uh, the uh, US exit and on top, uh, the threat which is posed by the ISK, do you think they can manage that at the same time the issue regarding IMU or the, uh, the Turkish uh, individuals who have been living in the bordering area with China, our threat per perhaps is primarily uh, regarding the TL, uh, this, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, TTP, the Pakistan chapter, and so on and so forth. Hazara issue is with the Iranians. So you talk about the uh, Tajik issue, that is there as well. Do you think the Taliban, they are in a position to handle these many affairs, these many fronts, considering the conditions where there is no support coming in uh, for them from anywhere, sir. The, the economy is at a verge of collapse. Uh, people perhaps are at, 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 a, at a, the verge of starvation. It is believed that half of the population. Let's start from there, Anas Uh Thank you, Professor, sir, for having me in your show. And I think uh, you are rightly pointing out that what kind of the challenges the Taliban regime is facing right now. And uh, you pointed out about the uh, emerging the humanitarian crisis there. But I think it was known from the day first that uh, what kind of the challenges Taliban will face. And first, their all internal problems are linked with their actions against the non-state actor, actors they have on their soil. And their relationship with the, the international stakeholder will determine what kind of the future the Taliban regime will have so this, this were the, from day first, all these challenges clear, but the Taliban's immediate attention remain on resolving their immediate or the, uh, uh, or the issues. Uh, and they have hardly paid much attention on the presence of the international terrorist networks in Afghanistan. They had signed a deal with the U.S. Uh, about the future of Al-Qaeda, and they agreed that Al-Qaeda will not be allowed to use the Afghanistan soil uh, against the U.S. or its allies. And Taliban were anticipating that they will go with the similar kind of the deals with China about the ETIM and maybe about the ISK or the Daesh networks uh, uh, with Russia and other Central Asian states. But they have had this such a big uh, diplomatic capital that they can utilize these kind of leverages and to exploit it at the level that they can get the international recognition or at least the, what kind of the immediate challenges that they are facing. So this was the, the, in the broader uh, perspective. We can say that the Taliban are still struggling to, uh, to see how they can uh, address their uh, immediate internal challenges while connecting with it with their external uh, influences or the challenges. As far as ISK is concerned or any other group is concerned, I think the Taliban are more than uh, enough capable for dealing with these kind of the, the threats. They remain the, one of the potent uh, non-state actors in the history of the militancy, uh, at least in, in, in Asia. Uh, and the level of the ISK threat, it wasn't that much that Taliban would not be able to cope with. And the article you're mentioning, so my argument was that this is not the ISK is the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge is that what kind of the socio-political uh, fault lines that Afghanistan have. For example, this is the Salafi-Hanafi divide is not a new phenomenon in Afghanistan. 
It's existed in, in Afghanistan since centuries. And, but somehow, the, most of the regimes have deal with this issue uh, very delicate, uh, delicately. But after the takeover of the Taliban, this fault line emerged again. And what kind of the insecurity the Salafis or Anadis are facing in Afghanistan, I think this is very well known. And Daesh, this is ISK, is thriving, exploiting this fault line. And this is the one of the biggest uh, our simplification of the, the socio-political context of the Afghanistan by, by the Taliban. So this was my uh, the, my my core argument. And this is not only to be going to be create a biggest challenge, one of the big challenge for for the Taliban, but as you mentioned, that most of the ISK uh, the network exists alongside the Pakistan border in, in, in Afghanistan. So from Kunar to Paktia, Post, Nagaha. So if it, this conflict intensify, so who will bear the, uh, uh, the, uh, the whole this burden? And uh, of course, the heat will come inside Pakistan. And I, has, I had mentioned that it happens quite recently when the Salafi and Hanafi divide, divide get worsened in the near future, many of the Afghan Salafi scholars migrated to Pakistan and they contacted with the Pakistan institution. They uh, requested for help from the religious clergy here in Pakistan and to request the Taliban that to change their attitude, the, the behavior towards the Salafis in Afghanistan. Uh, but we know that the, the, the mindset the Taliban have got, they listen less towards the same vices. So this is a problem. And interestingly, it was being projected initially that it may be in Afghanistan, the Shia Hanafi divide will increase and the situation will may get worse for the Shias in Afghanistan. There was concerns about the Hazara community in Afghanistan and initially that happened. But no one knew that the Taliban will not look into their uh, in, in, in other very sensitive socio political, religious, ideological part line. So, this was my argument what the Taliban, how the Taliban are dealing with their internal threat, it, it has the implications for Pakistan at least, and it may have the implications for, for China. And uh, uh, as the UTIM uh, is also in the fold of the Daesh, and if you look at the profile of the Daesh, it's increasing, though I'm not. This, uh, going to subscribe this idea that the, uh, the, there's a, a, a more and more fighters are coming from across the world and joining uh, uh, the Daesh in Afghanistan, but they already have the sufficient resources, and most of the resources they collected from their neighboring state. If you look at the, the recent uh, attacks, uh, you will see that even the target killing of the Taliban leadership, they had the bloat, they had the Uyghurs, the, the belonging to the the, uh, the former ETIM. So uh, they had the Pashtun. So this is quite diverse profile they, 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 they have got. And this is quite concerning. And their appeal may increase, but the Taliban are ignoring uh, the, this threat. And again, I will say that the one of the, uh, uh, the country which will face all this uh, heat is, will be, be Pakistan. All right. Now, coming to you, uh, Air Vice Marshal Ijaz Malik Saab, a couple of very important, uh, I think, areas uh, on which um, Amir Rana has thrown light upon. So, one is about this, this very important uh, division, Salafi and Hanafi. Now, he says that... Um, the Taliban, I mean, maybe they have a different ideology regarding the uh, Salafis and uh, this could be the beginning of, you know, that particular, I would say, the fault line that always existed historically, as just mentioned. He says this is the biggest threat. The socio-political and religious uh, factors cannot be ruled out, sir. But, sir, currently uh, there is no money in Afghanistan, sir. People are literally starving. The winter has approached. There are a lot of problems that are there uh, for the average uh, Afghan uh, 
uh, people. But sir, having said that, now one important factor, and that is about the, the various sorts of threats that are there in the region. And they're not only uh, posing you know, some sort of a serious uh, threat to, to Pakistan or, or China or Iran for that matter, or the entire region. Now, this is something which really suits to India. And they've always said that turmoil in Afghanistan during this regime is going to be our success. And obviously, sir, Americans 100% will be on board. Otherwise, they would have looked after, after the affairs. Now they have backed out. So the current situation, if there is no support for the Taliban regime, let's say for another three, four, five, six months, do you think, sir, this could really trigger? This problem is going to multiply, and that is going to be perhaps the biggest threat so far uh, for the region, and in particular, for Pakistan. Faisal, thank you very much. And before I touch upon the current uh, status and uh, uh, what I uh, see coming in near uh, future, let's very briefly touch upon uh, the history, uh, the origin of uh, uh, this group. Uh, as uh, uh, Rana Saab has mentioned, uh, this is a Salafi uh, uh, you know, group uh, which uh, you know, takes its uh, roots and uh, their uh, th theology is that we have to revert back to our Islaf, which means uh, the first three generation of the Islam. And uh, the, that is the Sahaba, uh, then the uh, Tabi'in, and then Taba Tabi'in. Taba -tabi, yeah. So these three generations, uh, so, uh, and then by following this purest Islam, uh, uh, I, I mean, there could, there's nothing wrong in it. But, you know, what concerns today's world is that they have, uh, their purest, uh, their one distinct factor, uh, faction is purest, which, uh, you know, uh, the, who are uh, restricted to their own pra beliefs and uh, practices. Others are activists who are politically active and who want to exert beyond boundaries. And the third, are the jihadis, uh, which are now being represented by the pe people that we are talking about. And this third group has been uh, traditionally supported by uh, West uh, in certain areas for their own vested interests, uh, be it in the Middle East, or in, in North Africa. And uh, uh, now in Afghanistan, the only difference is uh, that uh, it used to be state versus state. And now what the state is, state is being represented by another militant group, which is Taliban. So now it is, as they call it in military terms, it is, uh, you know, steel versus steel. And uh, Talibans are not even acknowledging the emerging threat. Uh, you know, they are, I would say, partially in a denial mode. And because uh, the, fig the total no strength of the, uh, this group uh, is reported something between 2,000 to 4,000, but the kind of uh, uh, snowball effect I foresee, because there are some dissidents hmm. within the Taliban group, who people who have been taking uh, the extreme hard, uh, extreme right uh, line, and uh, they were against the Qatar, uh, you know, talks. And now, if the world does not support uh, the present Taliban regime for the human crisis that they are facing and which will, you know, uh, multiplying uh, on mm -hmm. every day with the coming weather, the, uh, uh, the drought and uh, lack of food and uh, medication. So uh, I think they will uh, continue to build, they will have their synthesizer uh, and their base may increase. So who is supporting them? Who is financing them? Who is equipping them with the latest weapons? And obviously, some sort of training is going on. Some sort of support is there. Perhaps it seems that the Indians I and the say, U.S. I would say India and U.S. You know, they had dumped. They had already left so much of weapons there, and they have sleeping uh, sleeper cells there. So, uh, it just to uh, uh, you know have uh, underground uh, linkages and uh, realignment, regrouping and something acting as a catalyst, the money flowing in from somewhere, and uh, uh, um, it suits in India, because India, as you mentioned in your intro, India has been very vocal about saying that uh, you know, a, a stable Afghanistan doesn't suit them. So their success is in the failure of uh, a stable Taliban regime. So they want to create a ripple effect which should go across the border towards Pakistan because these people... That is what the agenda is all about. In 2014 mm -hmm. and 15, they definitely had, you know, their linkages with people who were practicing similar faith, 
Uh, it's actually not their faith which uh, you know affects us. It is uh, the ideology, their, not the ideology, but the methodology which mm -hmm. they are pursuing to uh, promote their ideology. That what bothers us. Uh, so uh, uh, they have a clear distinction from uh, Taliban agenda. Taliban want to restrict themselves to Afghanistan Emirates only, whereas they say that uh, uh, our agenda is global and we want to uh, revive the purest Islam through jihad across borders. So that is, which is a total negation. That is the basic bone of contention. Exactly. Now, Khansa, another important area, in a sense, um, uh, Avi Amsa just mentioned about the division within. Uh, there are a couple of uh, areas. Let's start off from the, uh, you know, uh, division within the ranks of the Taliban once. Obviously, they're hardliners and they're, there's another group. There are people sitting on the top taking decisions and then there are the fighters on the ground. Then you talk about this very major divide between the Salafi and Hanafi. And then you talk about another very important factor, and that is about the non-state actors, whether in the form of Al-Qaeda, whether in the form of IS or Daesh, or any other hardliner for that matter. Now, the Taliban do not have any design beyond the borders of Afghanistan, whereas when you talk about the Khurasan chapter of the uh, Islamic State, they have. What exactly is brewing out there, sir? Because this is something which is a perfect recipe for disaster inside Afghanistan. This is, uh, Khansa, what we have been earlier also talking about, that uh, perhaps it is going to be a civil war-like situation, even worse than that. Your take, sir. Look, Faisal, I think uh, in the same program, uh, as you mentioned, we were talking about, uh, when we, whenever we talk about Afghanistan, that if Taliban came into power, that will be a nightmare for Pakistan. I think this was, the, this was mostly... Uh, 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 we said uh, the reason was uh, Pakistan was not I think uh, uh, this is not what Pakistan want in Kabul uh, that, that uh, all exclusive government but this is the impression Taliban. which the whole world has actually yes, seen definitely but this is not what Pakistan we have been blamed want. I think this that. is what not what the uh, what the world want this was not that so I think what Afghanistan currently is I think it is a, it is the best incubator for I think various uh, non-state actors, uh, terrorist organization, you name it, you, uh, you, you, you can uh, euphemistically use fine words like the Salafis, like the Hanafis, like the ISK, like the Tal, etc. These are various euphemistically named. I think all done, you know, they, they are agendized uh, terrorism and they are involved in terrorist activity in Afghanistan. For the last several months, I, th I think ISK has done uh, more than uh, almost 100 uh, attacks uh, inside Afghanistan. 80% of them against the Taliban regime. 80% against the Taliban regime. So I think uh, what I see Afghanistan, Afghanistan is the messed up, I think, is totally messed up. Uh, uh, currently, is the, the problem is of the, uh, of the stability. It is an unstable country, Afghanistan. It's totally unstable. When a country is unstable, so I think this is, a, is, a, this is free for all. Uh, whether it is the Islamic terrorist, whether it is the un-Islamic terrorist, whether it is the for the Indian to uh, to to influence various actors there, for or the intelligence agencies working inside Afghanistan. I think the internal, the, mm. the internally it is totally it, mm. is, it is it is falling apart. So you, what you mentioned, the differences uh, within the Taliban ranks, then uh, the Muslims, then within certain uh, sects. So I mm. think the division is it has gone too deeper. Uh, this is what a big challenge is. I think this is not a challenge for Taliban. Uh, I agree with uh, uh, with the IBM sub that uh, Taliban are in a total denial. Not partially, they are in total denial mood. They are not understanding what's going on there. They are trying to pressurize the world by using their own population, uh, telling them that if you are not support, if you if you don't recognize us, or if you don't support Afghanistan, so the Afghan people, almost 40 millions, uh, their lives are under threat, you know, poverty. Uh, uh, what you call it, uh, diseases, what you call it, lack of, uh, lack of resources, maishat, etc. So it is totally in, in disarray. So the, the problem is, I think nothing will happen to Taliban. Taliban were in the mountain for 20 years and they can go back to the mountain for another 20 years. But the problem will be, uh, there's a very famous uh, uh, share, masla pool ka hai pool ke dar jayega. So I think the problem is for us. The problem is for the neighboring countries, including Pakistan. Afghanistan is suffering for the last 40 years due to various wars. So I think this is the situation where we have to think because the, we are not, uh, this is, this is no, we are no more in a position how to avoid the danger. I think we are in the midst of the danger. The situation is totally getting out of, 
out of hand, not only for us, for the regional countries. The international community, definitely led by the U.S., they have their own concerns. It is a, it is a matter of ego uh, for both the major powers, like the Taliban and the, and the U.S. So internally, Afghanistan, uh, it is in a total mess. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the ISK, it's not only the IMU, it is the TTP. Look at the way uh, the Taliban are treating the TTP. Look at the way they are advising us to sort out the differences with the TTP. What are the differences between Pakistan and the TTP? So I think uh, uh, we were expecting... Do you think the, the Afghan Taliban, they have that kind of an influence over the TTP? I think definitely. So to sort of persuade look, them look, to, to get into the negotiations before, yes, and talk. A few days back, there was a statement from the TTP leader uh, that uh, we are part of the TTA, we are yeah. part of the Taliban exactly. uh, movement, and we fought together. Uh, we, uh, and that's true. Th yeah, that's a fact. Uh, for 20 years, they shared bed with each other. It was a major transport line for uh, uh, for the uh, for the supplies. TTP service, the major conduit for the TTA. So I think that's a fact. And Afghan Taliban realized that uh, the, the, the support extended by the TTP to them during, uh, during what they call it jihad against the international that forces. That made the difference the also. So I think they realized it. So I'm not expecting anything uh, uh, that uh, mostly uh, we Pakistani are expecting that now Taliban are there, so we were too happy. I think almost everybody, even our prime minister's uh, statement was, I'm not repeating that statement, but that was also in line with the expectations uh, from Taliban. So now we are looking at the situation. The situation is day by day. It is worsening. Uh, there is hardly any realization uh, on the part of those responsible in Kabul. Um, and the international community, community is also watching. But the ultimate supporter will be the regional countries, mostly primarily Pakistan. And pa Pakistan is already, uh, already hitting, I think. You see the way the US is treating Pakistan, the way West is treating Pakistan. They are considering Pakistan instrumental in bringing Taliban back. Uh, it may, uh, they may be wrong, but the widespread perception is that it is Pakistan who helped Taliban f uh, uh, fight against the international forces for 20 years, and then it was Pakistan bringing Taliban to Kabul. And now the way Pakistan is working uh, diplomatically convincing the world uh, to recognize or to help them out, definitely Pakistan is doing it for its own interest, because the day Tal uh, Afghanistan fall into internal conflict or internal sand war. So it will be the Pakistan will be the major sufferer. Interestingly, so now there's we are in a case 22 situation. <laughs> there, there doing it or not doing it. So I think we are in the trouble. Now another issue, you know, very interesting aspect was that uh, the Chinese are waiting for Pakistan to accept the Taliban regime, mm -hmm. whereas the Pakistanis are well, waiting for the, them to do for so. For the Chinese to do so it, for the Russians exactly, to do it. Exactly, it's a very interesting. And everybody is waiting for the US to do it. U.S. is not going to do and it. We all know. Now, coming to uh, you now, uh, uh, Amir Anasab, uh, the visit of the four U.S. senators uh, to Pakistan, they met the uh, prime minister. They also met the chief of army staff. Now, first of all, sir, these are pretty hardliner and the kind of, uh, you know, uh, mindset I would say they have. I mean, whether you talk about the defense or you talk about the intelligence or otherwise. First of all, sir, the significance of this particular visit and since I went through all the news, I went through the uh, tweets of the DG ISPR also, I mean, nothing concrete uh, could be, you know, uh, seen there. It was more about the mutual interest. Perhaps the word Afghanistan was also used. Now, do you think uh, that uh, these senators were here in Pakistan for a certain agenda to convince our government perhaps or, or something else? What exactly do you think was the actual uh, area of concern, sir? Uh, I don't really know that what should be the uh, really agenda behind that, but apparently it seems that uh, the Washington wants to look at the, what kind of the, the relationship it can have with the Pakistan uh, in future. And within the framework of the FPEC, uh, emerging crisis in Afghanistan and beyond uh, Afghanistan. And uh, Pakistanis also want to have the, uh, at least the working relationship, the functional relationship with all the, uh, the stakeholders in Washington, D.C., either it's the State Department, the Pentagon, or the Capitol Hill. And the Capitol Hill always has the different uh, credentials. And you mentioned about the senator. Uh, so they are basically trying to explore that what kind of the, the uh, the mindset, the power relief had got in Pakistan 
right now. And they had the meeting with the civil society actors, with the political parties, with the, the establishment, with the security establishment, with the government. I think it will help them to understand what kind of the mindset uh, right now the Islamabad and Rahul building has. And it will help them to evolve their future approaches towards Pakistan and Afghanistan. As far as the Afghanistan is concerned, that this is not the case that the, everybody is watching to, towards each other to recognize the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. So basically, everyone is looking towards the, the Taliban that how they will behave in, uh, in future and what kind of the attitude right now they, they are reflecting in their approaches dealing the immediate crisis that Afghanistan is, is facing. This is not exactly the same that the China uh, is looking towards Pakistan. China is looking towards Kabul. It's looking towards Kandahar. That what kind of the policies the, the Taliban will have. The same is about the Washington DC. The, the same is about the Moscow, the other Central Asian capitals. So the, the ball is still in the court of the Taliban, and they will have to decide the, what kind of the relationship will they, they will have their immediate neighborhood and with the international uh, community. And this is interesting that the Taliban haven't closed their door for the talks to any global actor so far. Uh, the U.S. right now don't need the Pakistan channel to talk with the Taliban. They are already engaged with the Taliban in Doha. And they have the uh, various channels to talk with the Taliban leadership. U.S. priority may be to look at that how the Pakistan can play the role of the spoiler or the facilitator uh, to bring some stability in Afghanistan. And by the way, the Taliban are also desperately looking towards the engaging with the external world. If you have look at the uh, the statement of the Taliban Forum Minister today and uh, the word he has chosen to appeal the international communities, at least I think it was, it may not be, uh, look like that it should come the, from uh, the mouth of a uh, uh, state, spoke, state spokesperson. So this is the, the situation. Taliban desperately, desperately need the recognition and the humanitarian assistance, the economy to unfreeze their assets. And in that context, maybe they or they think uh, the Pakistan support for the Taliban regime is not helping or sorting out their problem, rather equating the Taliban with the Pakistan. This is the one of the segment within the Taliban ranks that thinks alike. And they but the, on the other hand, they don't have other option except the assistance, the humanitarian assistance, which is coming from Pakistan or through the, the, the Pakistan lobbying. And you had mentioned uh, previously the OIC. So we will have to see that how the OIC will will react on this, what the crisis are evolving in Afghanistan. So this is not uh, uh, basically the... the uh, the Taliban are looking towards uh, Pakistan, and this is not the other neighborhood. The global is, uh, community is looking towards Pakistan that, okay, you go first and to recognize Taliban. The priorities, interests are quite diverse. And basically, this is the Taliban. They will decide about their future. They will decide about the faith of their regime. They will decide the faith of the common man in Afghanistan. No one can extend help, neither China, neither Pakistan, neither the Moscow or the Washington. Now, Ibn Saab, do you think that without the support of the Western world, in particular United States of America and European countries, obviously, uh, the Afghan issue could be sorted out, sir? Or do you think that the regional countries such as Russia, China, perhaps Pakistan, Iran, and the Central Asian states, uh, could jointly, you know, uh, sort of work out uh, a solution and perhaps uh, without the help of the Western world could bring in stability in Afghanistan to a certain level, sir. 
or the Western world is that important that nothing can be done because they are the narrative makers, they are the decision makers. At the end of the day, uh, they matter. Ideally, Faisal, it should be the Western world because uh, ultimately this problem was created by them. So now this is their responsibility to clean up the mess. But sir, morality doesn't exist. Okay, so uh, obviously realism, going by realism, realism, all the stakeholders in the region uh, who uh, would be affected by turmoil or uh, civil war or a crisis-like situation which is uh, around the corner, uh, they should, I think, join up and they should try to assist whatever they can, like Pakistan has been, you know, within our own limitations uh, uh, of economy or uh, resources, uh, we have been trying to help them, but uh, it is beyond our uh, capacity to uh, uh, do it completely. So it has to be the uh, regional uh, uh, powers, and, but uh, again it would depend how does it figure out within their own uh, Overall, uh, Sir, every single country has a vested interest exactly. in Afghanistan, unfortunately. And there is a clash of narratives also. That seems to be the real problem. I think China uh, 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 should be playing uh, her role. Because uh, uh, the problem uh, with uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, is a potential threat for the BRI and the CPAC as well. Uh, so uh, 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 just to uh, you know diffuse the situation, if Chinese can help, and they have the wherewithal, and mm -hmm. they have the resources, uh, they can uh, uh, chip in their uh, bit. And I think uh, in short term, China uh, can help them uh, if they really considered uh, what uh, uh, we all are discussing today. Th they also think like that, that this is a potentially a problem for them, and it is going to uh, definitely affect their interest in uh, short to uh, uh, you know medium to short term, uh, short to medium term. So uh, they can uh, uh, pool in some resources to diffuse the situation. Sir, Americans have been looking after these affairs for a very long time. While they were in America, two point two trillion is not a joke, sir. It's a lot of money, and the kind of uh, you know, and you're talking about two decades, two point two trillion, two decades. I mean, that's a lot of money they're spending. But, but sir, uh, they couldn't do anything. Actually, Afghanistan is in a worse state as compared to what it was in uh, 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 2001. Money, uh, uh, you know, uh, figures are okay, uh, figures are okay, uh, uh, although it would be wrong. But there was no tangible development over exactly. there. Exactly. Uh, if you, j I mean, it may not be, you know, prudent to give example, uh, uh, take example of Balochistan. Uh, haven't we put in, uh, siphoned in a lot of money in Balochistan in last 15-20 uh, years? But what are the results on ground? Zero. Because we haven't done anything for the capacity building or solving the Sir, core money issues. was given to the politicians. So this is every what year. Happened. I remember sixty to seventy crore rupee per MNA. So that is what uh, that is what was being done by Americans and West. You know, they were giving the money to the Kabul and Kabul, the most corrupt regime ever. Yeah. So uh, urbanized uh, Afghanistan is not Afghanistan. Uh, uh, anybody who is uh, governing Kabul uh, j is just restricted to Kabul historically. So they never did anything. Wh where were thos those promises of building, uh, rehab, and uh, uh, economic... Mr. Biden took a U-turn. Uh, uh, economic, economic opportunity zones. What happened? Nothing. Just imagine. So uh, uh, the money figure is okay, but uh, nothing tangible because... And who benefited out of that? We all know. Exactly. I mean, certain corporations, certain generals, certain Is that those people who ultimately senators. would shift their money to American accounts? The people who came, uh, like Karzai, the people who, uh, you know, came from U.S. Exactly. Uh, the same cases with uh, Mr. Ashraf Ghani. Exactly. I mean, this is the most unfortunate part. Now, Khan Saab, this very, very crucial... Uh, get together, I would say, of OIC in Pakistan, 18th and 19th. Uh, let's see how many people attend. Let's see what sort of an attitude of the financial institutions is about the Afghan situation, what the Western world is also uh, doing, because they have also invited a couple of people from the European Union. Now, sir, do you think, without the, the there's a beautiful Indian word, Ashidwad, of the Americans, do you think uh, countries like the UAE, or Saudi Arabia would do anything against the wish and will of the Americans for the support That's of the Taliban? That is what we call Penda Chaudhary Jo Hai, that is that is the U.S. which is I think currently leading the world against Afghan uh, Taliban regime and it is a fact. However, I think OIC uh, led uh, this international movement in, in Islamabad. Will it's, this initiative be fruitful? 
I think definitely it is. Uh, I think any any uh, any two person or three person meeting about Afghanistan, I will I will appreciate it, especially in the current circumstances where Taliban need not Taliban Afghan people. I think need support in any way. They need food. They need medicine. They need clothes. They need anything. I think because so there could be some sort of a financial support. Uh, uh, there could be you know in cash and kind both. Look, I think the world has almost as what the financial institutions are concerned. They have committed. I think more than in the first meeting when called by the UN, almost one billion dollars were committed. I don't know how much is realized. Is four five million uh, five hundred million so far? I think uh, that has been pumped into the Afghan economy, uh, especially into the cent central bank and. Uh, Aid, aid agencies. But one fact is that, uh, look Faisal, I think Afghanistan is a country and no charity organization can run a country uh, where its own economy is not revived, its own production units are not revived. So I Nothing think so was done during the last 20 years, Khan Saab, it was to revive the, the actual economy of Afghanistan. They were totally depending on the checks or the money in cash coming in from the United States of America. Look, that's and that big, is it. Look, that, that is a big problem for Afghanistan. I think for the last uh, 40 years, I will not use the word 20 years, for the last ever since 40 the Soviet years, invasion. ever since the Soviet invasion, mm -hmm. I think Afghanistan is not being, uh, nobody was in Afghanistan to rebuild or rehabilitate, as Avyam Sabir said, Afghanistan. They were there for their own interest. I think Afghanistan was, it was a center for the proxies, uh, proxies of the world. Every country, including Pakistan, India, Turkey, Middle Eastern countries, US uh, superpowers, all have proxies. It was a beautiful playground for uh, playing proxies in Afghanistan. So nobody has worked on rebuilding Afghanistan. Nobody has worked on institution building there. Look at the way the international uh, community has uh, formed their army. It was a 300 plus uh, thousand uh, armed forces, hugely equipped by, inter uh, by, by the international standard. But the day uh, uh, when it was a call for them, there was nobody there. And the, I think all the, the rooms they were just empty. vanished. So uh, everything just vanished. So I think this, this is very unfortunate. But however, I think, Look, Afghanistan problem is not a problem for Afghans. Well, I think we have to keep one thing in mind. For the last 40 years, the whole world, I think, gathered. Uh, look at, there were times when almost 50 countries' forces were in Afghanistan we, under, under a sub uh, uh, banner. So 56. 56 countries yeah. were there. In, only, in one country, it's a small country, Afghanistan. It's a country of almost, now we call it a, four, uh, it is a 40, 30 or 40 million population. And Hasab, sorry to cut in, a massive air force, an air massive power application, air power unbelievable, power against a country which didn't have an a functional air force. The good point so is there was no navy. I think there's no border with, uh, the, with, the, with the sea. See. Otherwise, even the world navies see. would have been But they were utilizing the naval carriers. They were utilizing, yeah, yeah, utilizing yes. for a faraway land. So I think the problem. If you is remember the first attack that was conducted on Afghanistan, 1998. Was, uh, no, no, no. Uh, 2001, 8th of October. The, uh, Correct, the sir? missile attack. Missile. I was conducted through these tomahawks and all. It was on Al Qaeda hideouts. It was in 1998, I think, when uh, it was done from the carrier uh, that missiles attack happened. And few of them fell but in Balochistan also. So I think this is this <laughs> is very important. Now I think instead of uh, every country has to play a role, some has to play a big role, some has to play a small role. Like look. Currently, at the moment, I say Pakistan, as earlier I said, is All in right. a cash 22 situation. Pakistan has to play a role, but the more Pakistan is playing role, some, some people internationally or even locally in Afghanistan, they are looking not good the way Pakistan is uh, playing its ball, uh, with, I think, the, 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 in, a front, uh, in a frontal way on Afghanistan. But Pakistan has no choices. Uh, even even the other regional countries have no choices. Well, I believe the better sure it is realized, mm -hmm. I think the sooner it is realized, uh, by the international community. It has to have a very, very comprehensive instead of solution. sandwiching the Afghan uh, exactly. population. Exactly, because it, it, you know, it is about the conflict of certain major powers. Otherwise, it would Unfortunately, be the people of Afghanistan are suffering. Yes. That's so correct. Anyway, gentlemen, I was just told that we're running out of time. But Khan Saab, thank you so much for your time. Avm Saab, it was a pleasure thank having you. you. And uh, Amir Anas Saab, thank you so much for your time as well. And that's all we have uh, for this, Saab. Inshallah, I'll see you tomorrow at 8 or 5. Till then, you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.